rejoicing. Uh, Resurrection Sunday. This this was the Thursday evening, as a matter of fact, that Jesus, about this time, their time, our time, Jesus was having, uh, I would surmise, I haven't specifically looked at it, but about this time he would be having the the, the Last Supper with his disciples on that Thursday evening because we know that after the Last Supper, uh, nighttime was coming about this same time that we're sensing now. And Judas, he told Judas, go do what you got to do. Do what you got to do, Judas. And Judas left and went and sold him out, let him know where he was at, where they could find him. And he pretty much went and waited for them to come on that Thursday night that we are here right now. Uh, and, and, and all tonight, all Thursday night, they tried to do some uh, some backdoor type trials uh, all Thursday night, back and forth. They took him to Pilate, and Pilate sent him to Herod, and Herod sent him back to Pilate. And uh, that Friday morning, Pilate brought him out to the people, and we know the rest of the story. And tomorrow, Friday, is Good Friday. We call it Good Friday, a bad thing seemed to have happened. They crucified Jesus, but it was a Good Friday because he died on purpose, with a purpose for us. And that's why we call it Good Friday. We can come to Bible study because it was a Good Friday. We can praise the Lord on Sunday because of that Good Friday. Uh, we can uh, punch our ticket to glory because it was a Good Friday. So we... We, we thank God for that good Friday. We're going to start with prayer, and with the help of the Lord, uh, we're going to wrap up our uh, series on blacks in the Bible, and we started focusing on women of color in the Bible, and tonight we're going to try to finish with the last two. Let us bow our hearts. God, our Father, we come tonight, and we thank you for this, another opportunity to get with a few of your saints and just talk about the goodness of the Lord and Look into the scriptures. Lord, guide us in a, in, in a, in a good way. For God, we are looking at uh, things in a, in, in a humanistic type uh, discussion tonight of your scripture, of, your, of the Bible history. We're looking at the Bible as a historical book, also as it is a spiritual book. And God, we believe you did that on purpose. And we believe, uh, God, that you wanted us to know that we have inclusion as a people of color in the Bible story, in the story of salvation, in the story of your people, we are in that number. So God bless the study tonight, help us to learn more than we knew and help us to even be made more hungry for the good, the good food that's in your word. It's in Jesus name, bless all that are here and those that are coming, we do pray, amen, amen. And amen. And and as I do, I'm I have, I'm gonna show a few pictures, but we're gonna read the scriptures now. So so get your Bible, have your phone there, because I want you to read with me. Because as I told you, when I when I began to study, now I've been teaching blacks in the Bible for uh, for years, for years. I, I think one of the first uh, series I did on black in the Bibles was when we were still in building number two. And I was teaching Bible study in person there in this old sanctuary where the children are now. And uh, and I began to study Blacks in the Bible. I taught it at the State Congress of Christian Education. And I taught it at Vacation Bible School for us many years. But this year, I don't know, something was different. I, I guess the, the climate, the mood going on in America, the, 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 the craziness of racism, the fight against uh, just the thought of having a critical race theory, having it taught in, in the classroom, made me more hungry to dig into it. And what made me more hungry to dig into it now, it seems to be the issue is the more I dig into it, uh, I don't want to say I get angry. Yeah, maybe I do get angry. I get frustrated. I, I get, it, it, it's so prevalent. It's so obvious to me that, that, the history of people of color 
in scripture, in the Bible, the characters, uh, Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Solomon, David, uh, Rahab, Cleopatra, uh, all these people, it's been whitewashed to where you don't see no black people. The only black people you may have ever heard of that they give credit for us was for the black man, the Romans made Jesus, <laughs> made him help Jesus carry the cross. That, that's the only one that I knew about coming up, Simon of Cyrene. Uh, and, and what they would pick for, Cyrene was an African country. Well, sure, so is Sheba. So is Canaan. All those were black connected people. So is Egypt. You know, but you didn't say Egypt. You didn't paint them as, you, you, you didn't paint the people that Moses uh, grew up under as being black people. That was Africa. But Simon of Cyrene, oh, we can give him that. Thank God that he put a couple undeniable scriptures. He told us in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 1, that, that Moses was married to an Ethiopian woman. They can hide that. Now, now in, the, in, in the original Hebrew, it was Cushite. But, but Cush is Ethiopia. That, that's Africa. So Moses, Moses, 40 years in the wilderness, children by this woman, was married to a black woman. We know that. Uh, the Queen of Sheba. And oh my God, I'm, I'm going to get into that tonight. That, that really made me upset. They tried to put an Indo European, and no good and well, the nation of Sheba for over 4,000 years has been Ethiopia. But they would not say that the Queen of Ethiopia traveled to see Solomon. Because yeah, she would have been black. But we're going to talk about that. But, but, but what I want y'all to even be more specifically concerned about is about the whitewashing. And, and, I'm, and I'm speaking to you as a people of color, specifically to the, my black uh, family of color. And, and I say of color because we're we tracing our roots. And I found out my great, 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 great grandfather was Irish. <laughs> He come from Ireland, bought some slaves and had babies and got saved and went back to Ireland and became a preacher. A Montgomery, yes. I just found this out. A great, great time five. Great, 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 great grandfather was Irish. So I got some Irish in me. Uh, I also uh, I also found out uh, that, that, you know, when I did my ancestry.com, I got some European Jewish in me, you know, whatever that is. Uh, I, I got some Indian in me. So, so we're a people of color. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. We don't have a straight line of, 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 of whiteness or anything, but it's all blended up. But that's what the Bible wants us to know, that when we picture those people in the Bible, we are there. We are there. We don't know how we got in there. David, great-grandmama was Rahab, the prostitute who was a black woman, a Canaanite, a descendant of Ham, okay? So, so I did my search, and, and like, it's just totally whitewashed, and mainly we are whitewashed through media, we, we, we are whitewashed through movies, we are whitewashed through history books. You know, the first we start, Christopher Columbus, you know, they taught us that in the first grade. Christopher, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue and discovered America in 1492. And, and we had to memorize that and take it on a test. Discovered what? It were three million people here. That's like you driving up in my driveway and say, I done discovered me a house. And you're going to move in. I'm in here. I, heard that. I mean, you discovered it. What you mean you discovered it? But that's what I'm saying. That's, they, they didn't give them any credit because they were not their color. You know what I'm saying? They, they were not their color. So... When they went out with the guns and the, and the weapons and the ships, if you were not their color, what you had in their mind belonged to them because your color didn't matter. And right now it's that same thing. Uh, uh, political positions, appointments, uh, head of colleges, uh, it don't belong to you. It don't belong to you. If you got it, it's only temporary until somebody discover it. Discovery is you. And, and, and then they're going to do whatever they can. And, and I'm not saying everybody racist. No, it's some black people hate black people more than white people do. 
But what I'm saying, that spirit of racism, that spirit of racism has always been around, uh, even when they didn't know what it was. Because at first it was just by, by, by after, after the flood, people spread it out. God spread them out. And it was not coincidental that uh, the, the descendants of Ham went to Africa. Uh, you know, uh, the descendants of Japheth, uh, the, the, what seems to be the white son of Noah, went to Europe, London, England, France, Norway. Uh, that, that wherever they went after the separation by their languages, that they began to populate those regions based on their skin pigmentation. And, and, and that's what we call ourselves African Americans. Think about that. I mean, we're a whole lot better than we've been called. So people have voted on that. That's how we got to be African Americans. And most of us never, you know, been to Africa. Uh, but we are uh, called African Americans after being, and that's just been going on 1950. That's been less than 70, 60, 60, 70 years. But now it's taken for granted. Same thing over there. Think, think how people got called certain things and it lasted two or 3,000 years, like Egyptians, when Rome populated it with Europeans in, in the top positions. And they would have, you think right now, now there's no, Egypt had no black roots. They just came up looking like Romans. I mean, they, they came up with light skin and straight hair. That, that's the way Egyptians always were. Okay, but we're gonna look at some uh, some historical documents and and I just want to give you information. I just want to give you enough information to get hungry. I, I'm no I'm no seer all. I was not back there, but but I can read. I, I I can look at maps. I can figure things out. Okay, let's let let's look. I I want to look first of all. I I, I want to look at my man. Yeah, my man. My I, I call him my man because because I like him. Uh, just a minute. Slideshow from current side. Right to the left, Carter G. Woodson. That's my man. Think about his thoughts. PhD at an early age. He started all this. Now think about it. This was just in the 1940s, 1950s. He wrote this book because he was trying to do a, a paper to help black colleges know their history in the world. And he couldn't find nothing that gave black people credit for doing nothing but being chained on a ship. So he said, wait a minute. And he began to study and uncover things that we were the ones that uh, initiated mathematics and architecture and, and democracies and, and all these type of things. And Carter G. Wilson, I salute you, my brother. Uh, I salute you. For, for your bold statement back in that day to say we have been miseducated, not we have been miseducated. And, and, and you, my brother, uh, with your nicely tied tie back in the day uh, that, that you open up a whole lot of doors and all you petitioned the, the, the government for was one week. Just take one week to focus on black history. And now it's gone to an entire month, and you want it, and he wanted that one week to be in February in honor of Abraham Lincoln, who signed the Emancipation Proclamation. That's why Black History Month is in February. But he only wanted that week uh, to honor Abraham Lincoln. But since then, uh, we have been able to gain an entire month. So, so I'm, I'm gonna show you how. Uh, how this miseducation has started. And it really started big time when you started having uh, uh, Hollywood movies, movies, and how movies, and we as we as black people, we went to movies. What you gonna do? You gonna watch TV, you gonna have a three channels. They, all the heroes, listen to all the heroes, Tarzan, oh, good. Can you think about how, how in the real Tarzan going to live in Africa and he king of the jungle and we just we just jungle it's that every time the, the Africans get in trouble here he comes swinging through the garden. But but this is an example. The top picture is 
the prevalent description of what Adam and Eve look like. If you would see that picture just by itself on a test, and they would say, who is this? Uh, Beyonce and, and, and what the her other name, uh, Diddy or whoever, uh, uh, Big G or whoever. Or oh, is that Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve! Adam and Eve. And, and we wouldn't think about it. Well, why are they white? We wouldn't think about it. They're white because we said they're white. But we just take it as, oh, that's Adam and Eve. We'll pick that picture. But we've been culturally conditioned. We would never think that Adam and Eve could be the bottom picture. If we saw the bottom picture, what will come to our mind is two Africans look like they're up to trouble, like they're hiding from somebody or something. Because our mind is thinking like we will never think. If we just saw, if we just saw this one picture right here by itself, we, we would never think Adam and Eve. You see what I'm saying about cultural conditioning? We don't think that. Or if we think it, we apologize that we thought it. Oh, I, I, I really I, I don't want to think that. But the top picture, ain't nobody gonna apologize for, for showing that. You know, you know, but in the bottom picture, well, we don't wanna we, we, you know, we don't wanna be a, a, a racist. We don't wanna so 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 that's what he's saying, the cultural condition. Now watch this. Now the picture on the left is the universal picture of who? Oh, y'all ain't talking now. You know it's Jesus. That, that, that's Jesus. I told you, if, if you saw that man on the left, on my left at least, if you saw that man in the left and you went to Walmart and he walk in looking like that, you think a movie going on or something. Man, they got somebody dressed up just like Jesus. But if you saw the man on the white walking there, you, 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 definitely, want, you definitely think he's not from America. He, he, that, that he just looking like a black Jesus by mistake or something. You know, you, you, you would never think that, you know, man, man, you, people going to think you black Jesus over here. If they make, because we're culturally conditioned that the one on the left, now that's, that's more like Jesus. He got he got the blue eyes. He got the blonde hair. You know he got the the the, the, the European nose. And Jesus ain't never the Bible gave him no hint that we had anything like that. Now on the right, they didn't say he looked like that, but he's somewhere. He was a man of color. Now 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 what we're gonna talk about tonight is now I'm talking about movies. I'm gonna show you how movies have a such a powerful effect on us. Now, the pictures on the top are the stars in the movies. The major motion pictures of America, their time about the Bible. And the pictures on the bottom are more authentic as how those women would look. On the top, you got the Queen of Sheba. Now, Sheba is Ethiopia. Think about me. Now, she, she, she's a Kushite. <laughs> ain't nobody going to come and say, well, did you know Kushites are black people? No, ain't nobody going to tell you that. I had to dig into it. Now, now once I dig into it, that there are some brothers, out, and it seems like it's only black people. Only black people going to bring that out. When I looked and found resources, you will find history uh, about black. It, it, it's, it's categorized as black history, see what I'm saying? But the, 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 the white queen of Sheba uh, normalizes it. It don't say white history. It, it just said the history, the queen of Sheba. They made a movie. And for all people that saw that movie in their mind, that's the queen of Sheba in the Bible. And the one under her is the one more realistic looking as to the queen of an Ethiopian nation. And think about this. Think about this. Most European nations that, at that time didn't have no women over the over empire. Think of, Ethiopia was the first one. Why nobody ain't bringing that up? Why ain't nobody saluting them as, as, as allowing women to have high positions of authority? The next picture is the Pearl White. That's a movie, 19. 1956. Now, notice all these pictures in the 50s. 
And that was in the height of segregation. What is segregation? Blacks, whites to the right, blacks to the out. The 1950s were rough. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. did the bus bar card in 1955. Because people were fed up. In 1955, if you get on a city bus in Montgomery, Alabama, you had to go to the back. You load from the back of the bus. The white people sat from the front to the back. The black people had to pay the same amount of money, but you had to walk all the way to the back seat. And that's where we get Rosa Parks who had worked and said, I ain't moving because the more white people came on to an expected and the bus driver said, hey, uh, black woman, you, you, you got to move back to the back. And, and I don't th really, I, 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking there wasn't no more seats. But she had to get up and, and, and get a white man her seat anyway. That was in 1950. Now, now think about the condition they had until they had a leader like Dr. King they said, we got to do something about this. People just went along with it. They just got on the bus, paid their fare, went to the back. Why? Because we ain't looking like no queen of Sheba. You know, the bus driver might say, who you think you are, the queen of Sheba? Black woman get to the back. Because now that woman got on there and said, oh, man, you look just like the queen of Sheba. I saw the movie this weekend. That's cultural conditioning. And then Zipporah. Moses' wife. We see in the in the book of Numbers, chapter 12. Matter of fact, if you got your Bible, come on, let's do a quick turn to Numbers chapter 12. Because I told y'all to circle that, to circle that one in your Bible, because they can't, they can't, they tried, they tried to hide it. They tried to hide it. They they tried because of the they, they couldn't go Cushite because they went Cushite. Then they would have to cover everybody in the Bible, uh, Egypt and everywhere else. Look at Numbers chapter 12, the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 12, verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron. Now, that's Moses' brother and sister. Now, Moses, you know, had to run out of Egypt, which is in Africa. He had to leave Africa, and he couldn't run for, you, you can't run out of Africa. You, you would die before you make it to the end of Africa. But he went to another part. Come on, he went to another part where there were other people of color living, the Midianites who are also descendants of Ham. So Moses went, went and hung out uh, with some other uh, dog, with some dog-skinned people, the Midianites, and he married uh, the priest of Midian's daughter. Well, look what it said. And Miriam and Moses spoke against Moses because he had an Ethiopian woman he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now you look up there at that picture. Zipporah. Do that look like an Ethiopian woman? No. No. She'll stick out in Ethiopia like, like uh, well, uh, well, well, you know, well, you know, if she went to Ethiopia, she they they'll know you ain't from here, you. But in the movie. When you're surrounded by people not going to give any blacks for being credit, the wife of Moses, the Moses who parted the Red Sea, who God spoke to from a burning bush, she couldn't be no part of history, but she can be a part of black history because the bottom picture is more what she looked like, even her age. Now, the next one, Bathsheba, that movie came out in 1951. Bathsheba. Mm. That one really gave me some anxiety and some and some and some, and some 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 anger because Bathsheba. Now now Bathsheba was the woman that 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 David saw bathing, and even though he had about seven or eight wives already in the palace. Uh, Matter of fact, let, 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 let's go to a scripture. Let's go to a scripture. Get out your Bible now. Come on. I want you to see it. Uh, turn, if you will, to 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 11. 
Second Samuel chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. And I'm going to read. Now, now we, we're looking at Bathsheba, okay? And, and I did study on this. This is a woman of color. Now, and it came to pass after the year was expired. We get into the history of David. David has conquered most of his enemies. And, and, and what had happened, David used to lead all this. He used, he used to lead the battle. David was the best fighter. You heard the song about Solomon killed his thousand, David killed his 10,000. That God gifted David to be a warrior. And, and, and every warrior had to have some good warriors around him. And he had some good soldiers. And David was in one battle against the enemy, and the enemy almost killed him. They cut David off, and that's what the enemy will try to do. The enemy will try to get your leaders. That's why I thank so much for y'all praying for me. They cut David off, and they had David surrounded. And they was about to kill David, and two of his great warriors showed up and beat all of them, kill all of them, and and save David. But when they got David, after they won the battle, they got David back to Jerusalem, and they sat down with David and said, "Look, David, uh, you too important to us. You know, <laughs> if you get killed in the battle, that's why the enemy want to kill you. Because if you, the enemy kill you." Uh, they can easily beat us without a leader. Man, you're too important. And they say, you're not going with us in the battle no more. You stay here at the palace. And when we got a war, somebody want to attack us, we'll go fight. And you stay here safe. That'll give us more power to fight with, knowing that you're all right, that we can't be in the fight looking for, looking out for you too. And David didn't want to do it, but he said, okay. But that was kind of a mistake. Because when the men went off to fight, all the men went to fight. And all the women stayed in the city till the battle was over. Sometimes the battle may be three or four months. You know, it's kind of like a ship going out to sea. The they have to fight out there. And, and so in other words, David was left in the palace with all the women in town. Women didn't have no men. All the good men were gone. Now, in verse 1, here's, I'm just picture, show you how the picture of the story comes in. And it came to pass... After the year was expired, at the time, normally when kings go out to fight, but they told David, you can't go, David sent Joab, his right-hand warrior, and his servants, his other warriors with him, and all the Israel army. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and they besieged the city of Rabbah. But David, but David stayed back at Jerusalem alone. And it came to pass, that evening, when the sun was going down, David got up off from his bed, and he walked on the roof of the king's house, which was the highest house in Jerusalem. And he walking up there on the roof, and from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. You know, back then, you didn't have inside showers and water and bathtubs. So what the women would do, uh, they would go outside with a bucket of water, and, and just wash themselves, sit in the bucket. So David, he up there in, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, he, he got a bird's eye view. Now, somebody say, I, well, we don't, we can't read into it, but I don't know if you did, you know, I don't know if the women know David walk every day that time of day or what. Uh, Bathsheba saw him. It don't say Bathsheba saw him. So we can't blame that. But we said it was just a, 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 a circumstance. Why was David on the roof? walking around the even time after the sun was setting that when women would go out to bathe. And David saw a woman wash, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. How you, how we know? Because he looked, and David sent and inquired about the woman. That's why, that's why later on, uh, David think nobody know. But already somebody getting in on it, because he didn't send somebody he trusted. You know, some people can't hold gossip, especially like that. David had to send somebody to go, go find out. Uh, and, and David sent uh, and, and asked about the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Leon, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Let me say this. The Hittites were people of color. The Hittites descended from Cush. I don't know if you keep up with me, but but turn real quick to Genesis chapter 10, 
verse 15. Genesis chapter 10. Stay, we're coming back to 2 Samuel in a minute. But right now we're going to Genesis chapter 10, verse 15. And I told you, the, 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 the way that you trace all the colors as the Bible is giving you hints about is found in Genesis chapter 10. Now in Genesis chapter 10, verses 15. Now I told you Noah had Noah had three sons, one named Ham. Ham was the black one. And even whitewash history tells us that Ham, the blacks descended from Ham. The whites descended from Jephthah, and the others descended from uh, uh, the, the, the third son, okay? Uh, so we know the blacks descended from Ham. Now, Ham had four sons, Canaan, uh, which is the nation of Canaan, uh, Mizram, which is Egypt, Put, P-H-U-T, which is Libya, and Cush, which is Africa, Ethiopia. Now, Canaan, which is the son of Ham, the black one that even whitewash history says the blacks came from. Now notice in verse 15, and Canaan begat, this is his son, Sidon. So the Sidonites, so the Sidon, so the Sidonites, not, not Sodom mites, but the Sidonites are people descended from his first son, and Heth. Now, Heth, from Heth came the Hittites, the Hittites. So the Hittites came from Canaan. Canaan came from Ham. Ham came from Noah. So the Hittites, if they descended from Ham, from which all the other black people on the planet descended from, he would have to be a person of color. So his people would be people of color. Now, how does that apply? Okay, go back once again to 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11, where we just left. 2 Samuel chapter 11. And we look at verse 3. And David sent an inquiry by the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Leah, I am, the wife of Uriah, the perp, the man of color, the Hittite? See, you see, you gotta go, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get it. it. It's Rick. Ain't nobody gonna put it out there for you. Matter of fact, they don't even want you to know it. They don't want you to, to de connect the dots. Read, read their, read their commentaries. And he'll be somebody from, from England somewhere that happened to be passing through time. He's a Hittite. He's a man of color. So that brings you closer to understanding why his wife, Bath, Sheba, anywhere else you see Bath, it would connect with daughter. And, and, and that's even in whitewash history. Bath means daughter in ancient Hebrew. It means daughter. Sheba is connected to Ethiopia, except in whitewash history. You know what they do? They put a put a hyphen between Bath and Sheba. Nowhere else in the Old Testament. You don't see it here, but we read down, you'll see it. They put a hyphen there so you won't connect <laughs> daughter with Ethiopia. They, but they said that Sheba in this, in this word means take an oath. A daughter that takes an oath. Anywhere else, you know, blind Bartimaeus, Bar means son, Bath means daughter. Bartimaeus means son of Timothy. Blind Bartimaeus, Bath. Anywhere else, Bath means, means daughter. Sheba means Ethiopia, except here. Why? Because they had to go back in this and not let her be a woman of color, even though she married to a man of color. Because if she becomes a woman of color, that's going to that's gonna mess up coming attractions. <laughs> they, can't use, they can't use that move, that person in the movie store. They can't use uh, Elizabeth or whoever to be Bathsheba if she's a woman of color. Because then if she's a woman of color, guess what? David was attracted to a woman of color. 
But we don't want to get into David because then we have to discover that his great grandmama was also a Canaanite, a woman of color, which means he got some color in him too. But then he's going to connect with Bathsheba, who was a woman of color, married to a, a Hittite, a descendant of, of Canaan and Ham. And then they're going to have a baby. Yeah, David and Bathsheba are going to have a baby. And if David got some color in him from Rahab and Bathsheba got some color in her from, from her ancestors, that means the baby going to have some color. And the baby is named Solomon. So they gotta whitewash all that. They gotta go all the way back and say that she don't even mean daughter, daughter of it, it, it mean daughter who took her over. Man, it's all over, it's all in it. But thank God they didn't erase it. You just gotta work. And I'm just showing y'all the tip of the iceberg. Just the tip of the iceberg, that's all. And, and now the, the the what I would call the European theologians have 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 have, have gone back, but we're gonna get into that when we get to the Queen of Sheba, because the Song of Solomon is something Solomon wrote all about a black woman. It's right in there where the woman says, "I am black." Don't she tells the other women that are married to Solomon. Don't hate me because my skin is beautiful. Yes, it's right in the Song of Solomon. I am black. I am lovely. I am loved. Now, you know, Solomon had what? Well, the Bible says 700 wives. They ain't got into that number. I, I, I mean, some right there, it don't, it don't resonate. I know he did a lot of political marriages. In other words, he was so great that in those days, for a king to make be friends with someone that wealthy, they would, they would give the king their daughter to make a treaty with them. And also they helped them knew their daughter would be taken care of because Solomon, the Bible says Solomon had so much prosperity. People would walk around with so much gold in the city that people just throw silver. I mean, they just throw silver. They just walk on top of silver. They ain't silver didn't mean nothing to them because under Solomon things, it was, it was, the country was so rich. It's hard to even imagine that Solomon was almost the richest well, they tried to say he was the richest man. Well, he was the wisest, but he wasn't the richest. It was a black man, the richest, but I ain't got a time. Minsu, I ain't got a time to get into that. But but Google the richest man who ever lived, and you'll find out who that was. It, 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 it was an African. You know, it was more gold and 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 wealth in Africa than it ever was. That's why they colonized it so much. That that's how they, that's why they over there. They didn't get no invitation. The European colonizers. Uh, uh, I like with the movie Black Panther. I like that sister, Black Panther, little sister, called a white man colonizer <laughs> or colonizer. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it was. I mean, that's from an African perspective. Now I'm not in that, but that's all they did. They colonized and they organized it so they can have a good way to get the money out. <laughs> then they put in the place who they want to put in and get them a little extra money. The game's still being played. It's, it's still being played in Africa too. So we can't, I mean, there's some crooked, there's it, it, some crooked leaders over there. There's a whole lot of crooked leaders. My brother uh, working for a big company over there and uh, they were getting some of the wealth. He, he was with an uh, 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 international company which was just getting the wealth. And what they would do, they would just pay the king. And the king would meet with them and uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna say that the, the king of the little places over there where they would find all this wealth, some of it offshore, different things, you know what I'm talking about. That that he would strike the deal with the with the big company, and the money would be deposited in his Swiss bank account. Billionaire. And the company and the people still living in huts. Ain't got no toilets, ain't got no lights. And his children, and you don't heard about him, selling around the world in big yachts and 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 giving parties on their ships. And I, I mean, and and the people. Cause my brother, he was so that he went, you know, he he worked over there offshore for 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 a couple of years. And he and he was amazed. He would go into the city 
And he kind of re trying to reach out to the brothers, you know, hey, brother, trying to help them, you know, because some of them got jobs. Some of them did get jobs working for the international company. But he said he was walking out and he was amazed that the children in Africa were so smart. He and, and, and smart can go a wrong way, too, if you don't if you don't have a good moral sense about it. But he said they they would go to school and they didn't have lights in their homes. They, but they had maybe one or two street lights. And the children at night would be gathered under the street lights. And my brother said, what are they doing out there selling drugs? And, and, the, and, the, and the man from there who was working with him on offshore said, no, they, they have to use that light so they can study their schoolwork. <laughs> at night, under, they, they would gather around the street light like it was daytime in schoolroom, trying to learn something, and yet, the leader is a billionaire. And that's why you see all those fights and wars over there. Uh, we, we can't hide our hand. The, the fact that, that we just ignore that, we pay him, we just want what he got. We don't care who we get it from. You know, I, man, I could talk all that. And that's how slavery got going. That, that, that's where, where black sold the black. Well, they, they, they didn't tell them where we were going. They, they, they were prisoners of the war, most of them. And, and the chief would sell them to, to these slave traders as though they were taking them somewhere to work on the farm. They didn't know nothing about American slavery. And they would sell them and get a little bit of nothing. Same thing with the Indians. The Indians would you know, sell their land. They would get them drunk and, and give them about 20 rifles to kill each other up. Same thing going with gentrification. I see, I hate to get off on these, on these bents. But that's why I'm trying to teach this so we can understand we got to break this cycle. You know, we got to break this cycle. We, we, we got to lift each other up. You know, you know, we got to come up from this. So that's why I put that in there that just because we are people of color don't, don't mean that we that, that we don't have the uh, the sin for nature. You know, we, we just we just not able to be in a position that that thousands of years has placed others to be in. But it would make no difference if, if we're going to be getting lifted up and then we still allow our sinful nature to eat, eat each other up. And we see a lot of that going on. We need to lift each other up. OK, so so we go back to uh, uh, Bathsheba. Bathsheba, go back to Second Samuel, chapter 11. I'm going to read real quick because time is winding up and we're going to wrap up tonight some kind of way. All right. And, and David inquired about the woman, and she conceived and told David, I'm pregnant. Well, David sent and asked about the decked woman bathing. He up on the rooftop peeping. I, and we ain't going to call him a peeping Tom, because she, <laughs> she was out in the open. I mean, it, it was kind of like a peeping Tom, though. You know, if he was decent, he should have said, oh, oh, she bathed. I don't want to see. But David must have got a, a big eye full. Because then he's gonna go down and tell somebody, go ask about that woman. And she and her husband, now we know the story. Her husband is out there fighting for David. He with the soldiers. And David called her up to the palace. And what was she gonna do but come and end up getting pregnant? So when her husband come back, for those who don't know the story, I'm sure most of y'all do. When her husband come back, she done told David, I'm pregnant. And you see it right there. In verse five, and the woman conceived and told David, I'm pregnant. And David sent to the battlefield and told his general to put Uriah the Hittite, the brother, somewhere where he'd get killed. He's angered me or something, something to that extent. Joab didn't ask no question about the king. So he did put him in there. Uh, Uriah got killed in the war. And David, you know, being, think he's slick, going to have a, uh, award him probably a, a posthumously uh, uh, a medal of honor and then to be the good man that he is he gonna marry the widow who's already pregnant with his baby and he done worked it out he done killed her husband he done married the widow he done saw her bathing and now he's doing fine just like some of us think sometimes that we in the clear but God know and that didn't turn out too good for him. But that's but that's Bathsheba. And Bathsheba was very influential. And, and, and let's look real quick before we get to the Queen of Sheba in 
turn to uh, 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 1. 1 Kings chapter 1, it's, a, it's one book over. And you can read that whole story of, of David and Bathsheba. David had children by other, children, other wives, and he had this one son with a son that he, the, the, the first baby that Bathsheba got pregnant when she lost the baby uh, because God didn't let it live. But she was married to him, so, so he didn't have to live that lie out. But then she got pregnant again and had a son named Solomon. And David told her, I love you so much, woman of color, that I, I think he had about six boys. And all the boys wanted to be king because you know, when the king died, the, the top son get the spot. And so it was a rivalry between them who would be the spot. But David told Bathsheba, probably in a heated love moment, your son, I'm going to make him the king. And, uh, and she didn't forget it. So now in 1 Kings chapter 1, we get to the point where uh, this woman of color, now King David was old in years. He was old, and, and he covered him with clothes, but he couldn't get heat. You know, old people are always cold, so David cold. And, and, but David, as we see, was a womanizer. He couldn't seem to get control of that part. Therefore, his servant said unto him, let us find a young virgin for him. I guess he liked young women. And let her stand in front of the king and let her adore him and love him and let her lie with him in the bed on his bosom that he may give some heat. You know, you know, there was no man laying with him. You know, find a young girl. To lay with him because they, you know, they didn't have central heating in the air. They had a fireplace, but he was in the bed and he was always cold. I don't know who this servant was, but he said, "Let us find a young uh, woman uh, and 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 let her lie close to him with body heat." You know, you marry people, you know that sometimes it's cold. You, it, it works body heat. Okay, so they sought for a young girl throughout all of Israel to lay and be with David in his old age, he's old. And they found a girl named Abyssal a Shumanite, and brought her to the king. And she was very beautiful and she did love the king and she ministered to him, but the king knew her not. That means the king did not have sex with her. When you, when you see in the Bible where it said, knew her, knew her, or know her, that, that's what the Bible used for had sexual relationship with her, I, I think. If you read in the book of Genesis, it began by saying, and Adam knew Eve. Well, that's what they're saying. Anytime you see, but it said David never had sex with the woman. David was old, but but uh, it don't say what his feelings were. But the woman, the young girl, loved to be around David. Then Adonai, the son of Haggai, exalted himself, saying, I'm going to be the king. Now, this this is one of David's wives, the other son, so I'm, he just going to make it, because I, I guess they said when, when David didn't mess with the young girl, that he was done, that he can't fight. And, 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 and this young son raises up and said, I'm going to be the king. And he prepared his chariot and his horsemen, and he had 50 men supporting him that were running in front of him in front of the city, and, and, and they were shouting, had just, had just, had just, had just for king. And they were running in front of him, and his father, David, had not displeased him at any time, saying, David, oh, why are you doing this, Hadges? Now, David, this dad hate David's son, and he also was a very good man, and his mother had him after Absalom. Absalom was another story. That's the one David really loved, but he turned against David. He tried to kill David to be king, and he conferred with Joab, the son of Jeriah, and with Bethlehem and the priest, and they followed him, and Adonai helped him. But Zadok the priest, and Benaniah the son of Jehoiah, and Nathan the prophet, and Shemir and Rhea, and the mighty men which belonged to David, they were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah running through the city, talking about he's going to be king, and all this. And Adonijah killed sheep and oxen and cattle, and, and he made sacrifices. He had, in other words, he had a big cookout, just like some of these politicians now, fish fry. He had a big cookout, and he invited all the king's son 
and all the men of Judah to come out to the big cookout. Now, they didn't vote, but he was trying to win favor. All right. But Dathan, uh, the prophet, and Benaniah, verse 10, and the mighty men who were in David's army, and Solomon, his other brother, he didn't call, he didn't invite them. He invited all of his other brothers except Solomon and Absalom, who is who was on the run. But all the mighty men who, who supported David, they knew this was out of line. So, so he was out of order. You know, he, he was the Donald Trump of his time. I'm the king, you know. So he invited all the people. And, and you know, it was like one of them things, if you don't come, when I become king, you're going to be in trouble. But he didn't invite Solomon. Solomon was the only one. And the other generals in David's army, he did not sing. And, and he didn't invite Nathan, the prophet of God. Therefore, Dathan, this is what I'm going to bring Bathsheba in. Dathan, now David is old, so Bathsheba is kind of old too now. So, so her son Solomon, he's a grown man. He, he ain't the baby, so we're in first kings now. And Dathan, spoke to, when she spoke to Bathsheba, who was still the wife, she was one of the wives. There's a dodger now. His, his mama was a wife too. So the prophet spoke to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, verse 11, saying, have, have you not heard that Adonjanai, the son of Hajith, that other wife, is, 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 is king? And David don't even know what's going on? Now, therefore, the prophet said, come, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou may save your own life and the life of thy son, David. Okay, okay. David did. David, oh, he in the bed. He ain't got up. And so the prophet tells her in verse thirteen, "Go, go into David, your husband, even though he owned the land." And said to him, "Did not you, O Lord, O King, swear to me, saying that my son Solomon would be king after you, and that he will sit on your throne?" Well, why then? How can Adonai reign as king? He having a big cookout. Behold, why thou yet talkest with the king? Now, this is Nathan. He's just as slick as David. He said, now, while you still talking with the king, I'll come in and say, yes, he sure lives. And Bathsheba went into the king, into his bedroom chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishab, the young girl, the Shumanite, Ministered unto the king, you know, gave him water and combed his hair and bathed him or whatever as a nurse. And Bathsheba bowed and gave praises to the king, her husband. And the king said, what do you want, Bathsheba? Daughter of Ethiopia. And 17, she said to him, my Lord, you swore by the Lord your God to me that Solomon, your son, my son, would be king after you and sit on your throne. And now, behold, Adonai has crowned himself king. And now, my lord, the king, thou knowest it not. I'm trying to show you how this woman of color was in the mix of all of this, that, that she was in the palace and she was using her sister swag. All right? Verse 19. And he has gone and slayed oxen and cattle and sheep in abundance and having a big cookout. And it's called all your other sons and Abinathi, the, the, the assistant priest, the license, the minister priest, and Joab, the captain of your host, and everybody but Solomon. He invited all of them to the big cookout. And thou, O Lord, O King, the eye, you are the everybody in the Israel looking at you, that you should tell them who is going to sit on the throne after you're gone. Verse 21. Otherwise, if you don't do it, it shall come to pass when my lord the king shall sleep or die with your fathers, that I and Solomon shall be counted as traitors, as offenders. We'll be like Michael Pence. We'll, we'll be put out. We won't even have an invitation to the White House. And lo, while she's yet talked with the king who wrote, who wrote up this scheme, here come in Nathan the prophets. And, and, and both of them together told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet is here. And when he came in, he bowed himself over the king with his face at the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, has thou said, Adonjanai shall reign after you, and he shall sit on your throne? Do you tell Adonjanai to do all this? For well, he has gone down this day and had a big cookout 
and drinks and eating and drinking and said, God save the king of Dajanah, verse 26. But me, even my servant, I, your prophet, and Zadok, the main priest, and Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, and your son Solomon, he didn't even invite us. Is this thing done by your permission? Has, has you not showed it unto me? Who should sit on the throne of my Lord, the king after him? Then David answered and said, even though he was old, they, they got him. He woke up now. Called Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swears, the Lord liveth that hath redeemed my soul out of all this stress. There go that guy who wrote the psalm. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, surely Solomon, your son and my son, shall be king after me. And he shall sit upon my throne instead of me. Even so will I certainly do it this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord King David live forever. And King David said, call Zadok the priest and Nathan. And, and you, read, you read that it's very it's beautiful how <clears throat> King Solomon does his last, last act. He, he, he gives a, a, a donkey and he says, sit Solomon on it and walk in front of it and said, he is the king of Israel, thus saith King David. And they out there having a big cookout so when the cookout is over, David had already made the official announcement. But I want you to see how this sister Bathsheba was in the mix of it all. And now she's a woman of color and she had a baby with David and Solomon is a man of color. And it begins to go on and on through the Bible. And we got to stop right here because it's eight o'clock and I still didn't get to the queen of Sheba. But as you see, I get very fired up about this. But I was talking to Sister Gail Christopher. I think I'm going I'm to do a little bit of this during the adult class for the Vacation Bible School. Because, oh, man, because there's no way I can finish the Queen of Sheba. Because uh, when I talk about the Queen of Sheba, I want to take you to Ethiopia. Ethiopia, you know, Africa, when we say Africa, we think of, you from Africa? Well, see, Africa is not a country. Africa is a continent. Africa has 67 countries. And most all of those 67 countries have different histories, have different cultures, have different languages, have different uh, educational systems. They're all different. You know, Zaire and, 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 and Libya and Egypt and Ethiopia and 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 Kenya, all of those African countries are different. But Ethiopia is the only country in Africa that for four thousand years, hear me now, four thousand years that we know of in history, that has never been colonized. They've defeated every invading army, Ethiopia. And did you not know, and I'm gonna stop here, the oldest Christian church is not the Roman Catholic church. It's the Ethiopian Orthodox Christian church. Ethi and, and see all this whitewash, we, we, we don't look that up. Oh, the Vatican, the Pope. The church in Ethiopia has the oldest Christian history of any church on the planet. How did they get that first? Well, the Ethiopian unit. He got baptized by, by the apostle Philip. Remember the Ethiopian unit that, that was leaving Jerusalem, riding on his chariot, and God sent Philip to go preach Jesus to him from the book of Isaiah. He had a Bible, baptized him. He went back to Ethiopia and started the Christian church. And they have been consistent ever since then. And another thing you don't hear about that, that we won't get into that, I'm not promoting it, but the Ethiopian Bible is the oldest Bible in the world. The Ethiopian Bible. Now, the Ethiopian Bible did not go through the uh, discussions and the votes for our King James Version, but it's older than the King James Version. The Ethiopian Bible, we have 66 books. The Ethiopian Bible has 88 books. And 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 God, I didn't get into that yet, as uh, far as my research and study, but it was rejected because they have some books 
that that the Ethiopians hold to be sacred. You know, they have the, the book of Noah and the book of all oh, these got a whole lot of they got a lot of other different books. We can't totally reject them. They just were not included in the uh King James Bird in, in the Greek Codex. So we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna stop right there. But oh man, what a what what, what I, I I I love it. I love it. But we gotta get, you know, we, we can't take away from Jesus the whole purpose of this was that I got to get back to teaching the scriptures of, of how to how to prosper and please God in your Christian walk and understanding the scriptures the right right living right the dividing the word of God so we're going to be back into that beginning of next month and maybe we'll pick up on people of color somewhat if you come out we're going to do it in person I'll see you in the church uh, uh, a couple of nights doing our vacation Bible school. I think that's in August. When, when, when we get to it, we'll do a couple of nights of people of color in the Bible. Well, I can give you some handouts of these uh, PowerPoint presentation. But 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 be mindful of that, that we are people. And, and that's why they don't want to, and, and, and I can see why. They, they don't want to get into the critical race theory. They don't want to talk about the things I'm talking about because they don't want other colors to hear this part because it'll make them go look and look at them old movies and see who made the decision to put this person in this role when that person should not even be looking like that. But that's that's what they did, that's what it did. I mean, uh, the American Indians became upset because they used to use a lot of, of white actors to play Indians. And, and in the 1950s, they didn't let black people play nothing. Even, even if it was a part for a black person, on the plantation or something. They uh, they did what they call painted face. They'll paint somebody's face black and then get their lips, big white lips, and they call it black face. And they'll be, oh, master, we didn't already pick cotton all day. Why, why you won't send us back out there at nine? Well, that, 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 that says a whole lot that they gave somebody a part to say something like that, what they think about black people. Not Not everybody now. But back then, what the mindset was, because they've been cultural conditioned too, just like just like we've been, you know, they, they'll be more quicker to see that picture of Jesus and say, "That's Jesus." If they see that black one, oh no, that that that, that won't even register. You know, that's that's somebody with a felony record. We <laughs> got money. He got he walk around looking like that. You know, we need to do a background check on him. All right, we're gonna stop now. Pass the winding down. Praise the Lord. I hope you got some out of this. Give God some praise if you did. I, I hope I hope that's my whole intent, that, 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 that we can grow better together, that we can grow better together. We're going to bow our heads in prayer, and then we're going to open everything up uh, for you to greet somebody, and then we'll dismiss all heads about. Father, we just want to thank you tonight. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can go through the scriptures and get an understanding. Thank you for Bathsheba tonight. Uh, because Bathsheba shows us that even though she made a, a big mistake, uh, she, 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 she submitted to the king. Uh, the king did wrong to have uh, committed adultery with another man's wife and killed a wife. and. And, and and killed her husband, and, and Bathsheba had the baby and stayed with him. But, but yet, it just shows your grace, how your grace is able to make the end right. Because so, so many of us, including myself, we've had such wretched beginnings and middle parts. But, but in the end, you can still use us. You can help us not go that way again. So thank you for that, the story of Bathsheba and David. And Lord, I pray that you bless all of those watching tonight and may what was said tonight be received in the spirit for which it was given to, to edify and to make us better Christians and Christians that can walk worthy in your service. Thank you, Lord. Bless every house represented and may tonight be a good night 
And may you keep us safe by your power. And early in the morning, wake us up in good health and strength. It's in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.